I think it is now what is known as Showtime. So I'm Rob Crocker, good evening and welcome to St. Peter's this evening. And we're thinking about Jackie. But we're also thinking about this institution. Uh, John Ginzel, back in 1964, started jazz at this church, and a lot has happened since then. Then a guy comes in this evening, and I look at him, shake his hand, and say, this is still your place, because that's the guy that took it to the next level and gave us what we have now, Dale Lynn. <laughs> Reverend Dale Lynn and his lovely wife. Yes. So let me see. Now, we're talking jazz, right? We're talking nothing goes according to plan. It's like combat in some degree. So I've got a list before me, and some of them, oh, let's see, Danny Mixon we're looking for, Napoleon Revels Bay, we're looking for Chris Flory, uh, Dad Scholl, <laughs> Judy Marie, Edu Ashri, and a number of other people here. But we're going to start with Mark Devine and his trio, pianist Mark Devine. He's a Tanaka. He's on the bass. And I, I, I actually told them, stand by your instruments, but they didn't listen. And on drums, Fuku Tainaka. Tainaka.
jump in and invite some special guests up and we'd like to ask Ted Schell to come play some saxophone with us. <laughs> Ted has been uh, one of the people who I always hear talk about the musician, musicians of that generation so uh, happy to have him here with us and we'd like to ask Judy Murray Cantorino to come sing a song for you. from now on.
take my advice You go your way, I'll go mine Best that we do Here's a kiss, I hope that this brings Lots of luck to you Makes no difference how I carry on I said please don't talk about me when I'm gone Booba doo 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 baby ceases from now on if you can't say anything real nice better not to talk at all take my advice maybe you go your way I'll go my best that we do here's a kiss I hope that this brings lots of luck to you makes no difference how I carry on Please don't talk, don't you talk, please don't talk about me when I'm gone. Booba doo dee ba doo day ba dum dee ba booba doo day. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you 
you so much. And you're so kind, and thank you, Mark, so much. Thank you, guys. So thank you. Tad on the tenor. Fuku on drums. Chris on guitar. Now, he has got the bass. The name of the piano player, I try to remember. I don't know if I remember that one. <laughs> Mark Devine. Somebody else, we, uh, as we do this evening for Jackie, we wanted to also acknowledge the presence of Gloria Mance. Gloria? Stand up. I thought that was you when I walked by. If it wasn't for her, Junior's last years would have been difficult, but she took it all and held it together. So thank you for that. I couldn't hear that. Oh, no kidding. Wow. So how many times did you call them names years later? Ah. <laughs> uh. You Ashuri, would you like to come up to the piano? <laughs> Napoleon Revels Bay on the drums. The Bill was all you where are you? The Bill. Bill is gonna play guitar and Oh, David Colding. David, you're here. Are you? David. Oh, good. So in the, in the name of jazz and the spirit of jazz, the band that was planned out to be second is non-existent. And this new band is going to say, OK, what key do you want to do that song in? Yeah, so. They're going to have fun, and you will have fun as well. You agree, Napoleon? They're going to have fun? Cool in the game. They'll be right up. You want to say something? Well, why are you coming up here? told me that Chris Johansson's in the house raring to play, so we're going to have him up soon as well. Not yet, Chris.
That's a song, we all know the title to that one. Thank you for the mellow tone, guys. David, thank you. <laughs> Brother Ashery. <laughs> Bill. And man, Napoleon came all the way from Long Island. Huh? Well, man's the same thing the other side of the East River. So, um, something we should consider when we think of Jackie, and I, you know how people say, oh, he was always good, always stuck it. And you know that it was not true. There were some times when you had to walk away from the person. But Jackie was never like that. I've known him for over 25 years. And he was always a very, very cool guy. Uh, and you would assume that his family equally was as cool as Jackie. And we can find out right here and now because his nephew is here to speak about his uncle and the family. So come on up here, Albert. Jackson, I'm Jackie's nephew, uh, and this gentleman is correct. I've known Jackie for 68 years. He's always was mild-mannered. Uh, never argued with anybody. Made you laugh, made you smile. The whole family. My goodness, I've never heard a bad word about my uncle in my whole life. As a kid, I would uh, like to go out and play sports. Wish I had uh, picked up an instrument, though. It's never too late. But I wish I had picked up one when he really wanted to teach me at times. I know, Uncle Jack, I want to go out, go outside, throw the football, play basketball. You know, sometimes I go out and I'll lose the game and I'll come back, oh, we lost, I'm ready. Come here, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Pull me over, talk to me for a few minutes. Next thing I know, I'm laughing, running out the room. My mother said, oh, you all right now? Yeah, Uncle Jackie made me laugh. <laughs> he was a good man. That's testament to all his friends, musicians, entertainers, singers, and all his friends and family. I want to thank everybody for attending and showing the love for my uncle. <laughs> I've been crying all day. For oh, a man yeah, he was not even my father, but raised me like a son. I'm going to miss your Uncle Jackie. Thank you. If you ever think, my oh, man, another piano player, another guitar, man. Chris Johansson's here to change that feeling. Chris has got a nice band coming up. Danny Mixon on piano.
Mark Naomi's on the bass. Michael Howell. Where you at, Michael? Oh, hey, Michael. Michael. How you doing? You give me back that $50, I'll be all right. <laughs> what, you know what Chris has come up with? To make everything different, the colors, the groove, just everything different? Marty Elkins on vocal. Hey, Marty. Marty, while they're talking, it's me, baby, up here. Sometimes handsome guy. I was going to say while they were talking about the chorus, you can just go ahead and sing a cappella. How could, no, men would, never mind, I can't say it. Hello. This sounds fun. This will work. Hello. I just want to say, since I'm just standing here with confusion and fusion and confusion, that I love Jackie Williams like with all my heart. He was such a nice man. Everybody loved Jackie. Everybody. I never saw him say a bad word about anybody. He was always smiling. People were still asking for him, like, very recently, like, where's Jackie, where's Jackie? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, Honeysuckle Road. A one, two. Every honeybee fills with jealousy when they see you out with me. I don't blame them, goodness knows. Honeysuckle rose. Oh, the flowers droop and sigh when you're passing by. And I know the reason why you're much sweeter, goodness knows. Honeysuckle rose, well, I don't buy sugar. You just have to touch my cup. You're my sugar. So sweet when you stir it up. On the avenue, people look at you. And I know just why they do your perfection, goodness knows, honeysuckle rose.
Danny Mixon. Danny Mixon, outstanding as always. Chris? Uh oh. Two good minds putting their heads together means a great tune coming up. Oh, you guys know Chuck Red, the vibraphonist? Yes, he is. And he's here. Where's my money? You're going to stay on. Thank you. 
Chris Johansson. Thank you, sir. The one and only Danny Mixon. Single petal of a rose. That was what he did. In the house was a guy named Chuck Red. Let's see. <laughs> Michael Howell, thank you very much. You still owe me the 50, but I'm not leaving for another hour and a half. This city banker across the street. And uh, Mark, is, Mark has got my back up, right, Mark? Mark Neals, the base. There are two folks that have comments they would like for you to hear. One is Al, what is Al? Vollmer, you're here Al. That you Al? Al, come on up. And also, Paula Morris. Paula, where are you? What, you know, you could sit down, we take the mic to you, babe. Why don't you let him sit there and give him the mic? You know, these young guys always gotta show off, you know? Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here, and I wouldn't be here except for the Jazz Foundation of America and Will Glass, who arranged for a ride for me to get here. My contact with Jackie Williams was through the Harlem Blues and Jazz Band, and that I formed in 1973, and the band is celebrating its 50th anniversary right now. I don't know why there was a rumor that the band has devised, has ceased. That puts us perhaps in the category of Hemingway, who read his own obituary, and also Willie the Lion Smith. However, the band is very much alive. I can guarantee that to everybody. Danny Mixon and Bill Wurzel are here, and they are part of the band. And uh, we are performing at a Thanksgiving party next Monday in Manhattan. Anyway, I'd like to just mention that Jackie Williams played, well, I, he was in the band roughly from 2000 until 2018. And he called me around that time in 18 and said that he was having trouble with his eyes and he would rather that I didn't call him for any further gigs. But he was a tower of strength in the band while he was there. The previous drummer gave a, a little bit of a demonstration <coughs> of what you would have heard Jackie Williams play because his feature number in the band was Caravan, Juan Tissol's Caravan. And he would start with mallets and end with mallets, but in between there was fireworks. He played with the brushes, the sticks, his hands, just like you heard, and also with a tambourine at the end. And then he went into back, back to, the, uh, to the mallets. So he was a great drummer. It's almost easier to say who he didn't play with than to say who he did. And Stanley Dance, the great critic, would have categorized him as mainstream. He was kind of like a bridge between the more modern jazz and the classical and the swing period. And he served the Harlem Blues and Jazz Band very, very, very beautifully. I can just mention a couple of things that we did, maybe some highlights. One was 
on a tour of Denmark and Sweden. And uh, actually, uh, Bill Wurzel was on that tour. And I'm wondering, is Michael Max Fleming here? Because he was on the tour as well, Michael Max Fleming. He was on bass, wonderful bass player. And in Sweden, we played in a small town called Ronneby in the south of Sweden. And there was an enamel works at one time that my grandfather was the CEO of. He had been recruited from Germany. He was the original Albert Vollmer. And we played in a building that he had erected or had during his tenure. I think he helped design the building. And it had, the, <clears throat> the Alamo Works had disappeared, but it was now a cultural center. And so we played in the shipping department where they had a stage now. And it was a big thing in that small town that the grandson, 84 years old at the time, that was 10 years ago, uh, that um, the grandson had brought a, a jazz band from America. I'm not sure what uh, my grandfather, the original Albert Ballmer, uh, would have said about the music, but I'm pretty sure he would have appreciated the skillful drumming of Jackie Williams. Uh, <laughs> And another another <clears throat> excursion was to the Far East in 2010. It was supposed to include the island of Macau, which is just off China and owned now by China. And also we were supposed to go to Japan right afterwards. <clears throat> but <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there was a SARS outbreak in Japan, and the Japan tour got canceled. But everybody decided, we'll go to Macau just there and back. And that's like 14 hours on the plane. <laughs> and, and, but we did the one job in Macau. And Michael Max Fleming was also on that tour. And we had a wonderful time. The, Jazz Festival at Macau was unique. They hired bands, but only one per day. So w when we arrived, uh, another band was leaving, and we played right on the top of the, of the island where they had a fortress. There were still the guns from the 17th century uh, pointed out towards the sea. And we had a wonderful concert, and uh, uh, it was just terrific. And we had incredible accommodations. In fact, uh, the, 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 the band uh, gave its approval to the accommodations if there were telephones in the bathrooms. And there were telephones in the bathrooms at, on the island of Macau. It's a wonderful place to gamble, if that's what you like to do. And I asked somebody, I said, is this bigger than Las Vegas? And they said, no, but more money changes hands. <laughs> uh, I'd like to close with uh, mentioning some of the things that the Harlem Blues and Jazz Band with Jackie Williams uh, has done here in this very church. We played many, many uh, all night soul events, and we have Reverend Lind to thank for that. <laughs> and we also played in the living room in the back here for a Duke Ellington Society event, and we played a whole evening of Duke Ellington material. And then finally, in 2003, the band celebrated its 40th anniversary right here, right in this space here, and we had a wonderful time, and it was a great event. So we all miss Jackie, and we miss 
his steady beat. Oh, before you leave, what, what, just, just one second, one second, wait. Al, your grandfather's village, Al, your grandfather's village, they said that you, the grandson, bought a band from America? They didn't say from New York City? Yeah, but they, they know the difference. It's not just America, it's New York City. It's, you know, it's a little different. San Francisco, they do it a little way, but here, we take you. That's why you're still here with us. That's right, that's right. All of talent keeps on going. So thank you for what you have done too. And <laughs> Michael Flemings, stand up please. Brother Fleming, stand up. Because we owe you a debt of gratitude. We want to appreciate you, all right? And so now, Mark, you're coming back. He wants to say something. Huh? No. You, you want to? Yes. What, a little while, can we? Oh, can we get more music and then come back? Can you get a microphone? All my life, my job. Okay. I have my assistant here take care of that. When he's not on the piano. Thank you. So many nice things have been said about Jackie. Yes. There's not too much that I can't say without repeating them. But I'm going to start by saying that all my life, the most of my life, has been spent standing and playing with, standing by and playing with great drummers. I say it again, the great, the greatest in the world. Max Roach. Roy Haynes. Yeah. Uh, Shelly Mann. I've stood beside all these bass players, I mean, all these drummers all my life. And the thing is, when I stood by Jackie, I didn't feel any different. Mm -hmm. He was a, uh, he was a complete musician. He epitomized professionalism. And he, he had a high-pitched voice. I, mean, you, you, I remember when he laughed. He had a distinct laughter. And okay, there's one other thing I want to say about him. I never, ever, and other people and have said this this evening, but it's remarkable. I never, ever, ever heard him say anything bad about anyone. Yes, yes. He was a great human being. That's what I'm going to end by saying. We all knew a great human being when we knew Jackie Williams. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Max Fleming. Ted Show, you're coming up. And uh, So Danny Mixon. So you see what you did out, out of nowhere came by Harlem Jazz and Blues Band. We've been looking for them for like three hours and then you spoke and they all appeared. So Danny Mixon. Thank you. <laughs> Brother Howell, you going back up. Warsaw. That's right. That was you. Bill, where are you? Bill, Bill Wurzel. Ah. We were going to rent vibes for this particular scene because we knew Chuck would be showing up, but no vibes, so Chuck Red is coming back on drums.
want to say a word about uh, Jackie and uh, a couple little stories. Uh, Michael Max Fleming was just speaking. We, we had a little trio gig on uh, Long Island and uh, started at 7 o'clock for a, a jazz society and Michael and, and Jackie got stuck in traffic. So at 7 o'clock they said, you, you have to go on. So I did an hour solo guitar, you know, figuring out what to do, you know, talking about the history of guitar, classical guitar, playing whatever I can. So eight o'clock for the second set, Michael and Jackie come in and they were all upset. Gee, I'm sorry about that, you know? And, and, and so we did the next set and we figured, well, that's it. They're never gonna ask us back again. And Jackie was really worried about it. Well, the next year they called back and they said, yeah, we want the same trio and do the same routine that you did. Do the solo guitar lecture up front <laughs> And, you know, I almost had a heart attack. I said, oh, they said, we're on the same way. And uh, Al was saying when we were in Denmark and Sweden, Jackie kept saying, where's the fried chicken? <laughs> uh, one, one other thing about the chicken is the last story. Uh, Jackie had a wonderful sense of humor. Always had a smile, as, as, as you all know, knew him. And, uh, we did a gig, we were on the road somewhere, and, and the people who hired us said, well, we're gonna take you out for dinner tonight. And we figured, oh, this is gonna be something really special. So they dropped us off at Popeye. <laughs> so from then on, every time Jackie and I would meet, we never said hello, Jackie would say, I was waiting for you at Popeye. And then we'd say, goodbye, I'll say, I'll see you at Popeye. So I just wanna say, Jackie, uh, wait for me at Popeye. Okay. <laughs> nice, that was nice, Bill. David Colton is coming back on the bass. The Harlem Jazz and Blues Band in memory of Jackie Williams and just saw all the music they have created and over oh, how many years. So here they are, welcome them please. <laughs>
Sounds good, right? We're going to keep this guys on the bandstand for one more song. Ide chan. Ide. Kiosukete ne? Dennis Lewin Day is a vocalist. We thought we'd add to this. We like to add things, you know? You ready, sir? If that's funny, no, you bring it up to the band. Enjoy yourselves, guys. Made has got a shade on sweet Georgia Brown. They all sigh and want to cry when she's back in town. Almost tips the pole that slips when she comes around. I tell you just why. You know, I don't lie. Not much. It's been said she knocks them dead when she's back in town. All those tips the porter slips when she comes around. Fellas, she can't get our fellas. She ain't met Georgia, named her Georgia, claimed her sweet Georgia Brown. Why? 
You know I don't lie Not much But do Oh boy, she's to catch me out. I'm gonna love her anyhow. Georgia Nanky, the Georgia Clang, the sweet Georgia Brown. Georgia Nanky, the Georgia Clang, the sweet Georgia Brown. Georgia Nanky, the Georgia Clang, the sweet Thank you. I'd like to just say a, a brief word about my friend Jackie. Jackie was a musician that I met when I first arrived in New York a lot of years ago. And we would hang out, I would hang out as an aspiring singer at Sweet Basil's, later known as Sweet Rhythm, so I'm taking it back some. But uh, that song was one that his boss, Doc Cheatham, would play often. But I never got a chance to sing it because Doc liked to sing. And he was a good singer as well as a super, super trumpet player, of course. But Jackie always encouraged me. You know, he said, just hang around. Doc will let you sing. You know, you'll eventually you'll get a chance to sing. And so eventually I did get a chance to sing there. And not only on the Sunday show. Remember, it was on Sunday, Sunday afternoon brunch at Sweet, uh, Sweet Basil's. And on Saturday, it was the Eddie Chamberlain show with Eddie Chamberlain, who used to be married to Dinah Washington. Uh, Dinah Washington, yeah. At any rate, uh, Eddie, uh, uh, he, would, he would encourage me, Jackie would encourage me, and he'd let me know, like, you've got a gift, you've got a talent, you know, hang it in there, come around, and just practice your, your craft, get a chance to sing, and show people what you got. And he always was a positive <clears throat> light, and, uh, I haven't been performing in a while, so this, I'm, I'm a little rusty, and uh, only because I had surgery on my, my ear a few years ago, and I lost most of my hearing in it. And I, I felt that very reluctant about getting back out in the public and, and performing again. But I'm coming back, and I'm gonna do it because I know that Jackie would have wanted me to do it because he always encouraged me, he was an encourager. And I believe that I still got it, and by the response that you gave me, I'm more encouraged than ever. So thank you for that. And Ms. Lewin Day, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Tatchell on the tenor sax. Chuck the Red Man. Yeah. Bill on the guitar, Betty. Oh, Danny, Danny, baby. Love you, man. Love you. And Mr. David, thank you. We're gonna have a couple of guys tell you some really great emotional things. And then we're gonna have a jam session until the end. Does that work for you? I, that, oh, no, you can't, oh, y'all not young people, you can't do better than that. So how about a jam session at the end? All right. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, Red Bogart, why don't you come up and talk? Yes, this will be cool. He's a slick guy. He's pretty cool. Jackie Williams, I'm honored to speak at Jackie's memorial, a dear friend since 1980, and I'm going to tell you a few reasons why. Uh, Jackie is the kind of guy you never wanted him to die. He graced the world, and he graced my life, believe me, and I'm going to tell you why. I saw him on Ninth Avenue a few months before he went to that home. He offered to buy me lunch at a very nice restaurant. 
I said, no, Jackie, I'll get it. He said, no. So we're arguing on the street. So I gave in. We went and had lunch. I said, excuse me, Jackie, he's going to go to the men's room. I'll be right back. I went to the cashier. I snuck over to the cashier and paid the bill. So when he found out, he said, you snuck over there and you paid the bill. You're tricky Ricky. You're just like you always was, Tricky Ricky. What am I going to do with you? You know, he said that all the time, and he raised his voice up nice and loud, but we, we had a pleasant evening. And um, I first met Jackie at the theatrical, the famous theatrical in Cleveland, Ohio. He was working there with many of the named jazz artists, which you see listed in the notes. I was working there, and I'd see him on occasion. But through the theatrical, I was offered a chance to audition for Harrah's Atrium Lounge in Atlantic City. So I got Bobby Pratt, Bob Fields, and I asked my friend Jackie, would you do it? He said, yes. So we went to Atlantic City. We got there at 12 noon before the lounge was open, and we played for the entertainment director. He gave us 34 weeks on the spot. And he was thrilled with Jackie. He said, these are wonderful musicians. And he said, that drummer, I can't believe it. I can't wait for you guys to start. He gave us a starting time. Now, those guys were fabulous. The job was fabulous. I put everybody on payroll. So they stayed with me until they qu qualified for unemployment. <laughs> So they came back to New York, they'd drawn their unemployment and work in cash jobs. But Jackie Williams got that job for me. He got that job and I told him every time I saw him. And I've always thanked him from the bottom of my heart. I stayed there for 15 years with different rhythm sections. Jackie, Jackie and I worked a lot of different jobs around here. It's no use naming them, but one. We did New Year's Eve for the family of the Shah of Iran. They had a beautiful townhouse on East 23rd. And um, I see Jackie was on a Warren Chisson. Where's Warren? He didn't show up. I called him. I told him he better come over here because I was going to talk about him. Well, it was Jackie, Warren Chisson, and um, Morris Edwards, myself. We played on the second floor of this beautiful townhouse, and the party was on the first floor. They were very nice to us. Say, this is the guest bedroom. You can put your coats on the bed, put your travel pieces in here, and all your luggage. <laughs> they called it luggage. So everything was going good, but they had a guard that came up and stood behind us. He had a pearl handled coat right there. Beautiful pearl handled coat. So Jackie looked at that. He didn't like it, but anyway, we played. So anyway, after the first break, Warren Chisson made friends with that guard. And next thing you know, the guard goes down and, and opens the trunk of his car and brings his Les Paul guitar up and starts playing some songs with us with that pearl handled coat in his belt. So that went along all right. The party's going good. Then Riza, the Shah's son, who was there with his PR firm, Armeo and Company, hoping to get the country back. And he brought some of his good friends. and said, I'm going to play the drums. I'll show you how good I am. So he brought them all up there to the second floor. He sat down and he banged the drums pretty loud on when the saints go marching in. Before he played, he took off his gold Rolex with the diamond bezel, put it on the floor next to the bass drum pedal. He was so excited, all his friends were patting him on the back that he walked downstairs and he left that gold Rolex with the diamond bezel next to the bass drum pedal. So when we started, Jackie sat down and he looked like he saw a ghost. I said, Jackie, what's the matter? Jackie, what? Ah. 
<laughs> he wouldn't play. I'm not playing with that. I said, oh, don't worry about Jackie. So I, I took the watch back to Riza, the Shah, and we finished up the night without a problem. The next time we got called to play for the uh, Shah's family, I called Jackie and says, Rick, I don't want that job. I don't want a job with somebody standing behind me with a pistol. And I don't like him putting his gold Rolex next, next to my bass drum pedal, <laughs> contaminating my drums. <laughs> well, uh, Jackie was a dear friend. I'm not going to bore you with a lot of stories, because a lot of them, but he was a wonderful, wonderful man to me, and I'll never forget him. I, I thought about this occasion for a while, and I wrote a poem. It's only 90 seconds long. I promise you, I timed it out twice. Man, it's, I think it's just right. Jackie Williams, one of the finer drummers around these yard parts. His timing is solid. His musicianship is supreme. He plays the drums the way they're supposed to be played in New York City, tastefully and pristine. A complicated gentleman, allow me to present, of all the arts and faculties, a terse embodiment. A great musician who can demonstrate with ease that he can play in two, three, or five, or anything you please. An intimate logician who can make it clear to you that Jackie's drums makes music when looked at from the proper point of view. The exciting, the thrilling, the inimitable, the ubiquitous, and the pristine. We love you, Jackie Williams. Thank you. I timed it, man. It was only 48 seconds. <laughs> Rick Bogart. know when musicians have events like this, who helps? When musicians are ill, run out of money to pay the rent, do you know who helps? The Jazz Foundation. We should give them a round of applause. <laughs> and welcome Will Glass from the Jazz Foundation. Thank you, Rob. Uh, my name is Will Glass, Program Director of the Jazz Foundation. I just want to say it's so great to see everyone and so great to be here in this space uh, together celebrating Jackie. We want to thank the staff of St. Peter's uh, for making this possible. Um, it's so great to be here. Thank you. Um, and yeah, it's an honor to get to be here to celebrate Jackie, one of our nearest and dearest, uh, beloved by all our staff for his warmth and that incredible sense of humor. He was a band leader in our Jazz in the Schools program for many, many years. And I don't know how much other leader work he did, but he was, he was so great in the schools. He had that calm demeanor, put the kids at ease. Uh, he always had a little lesson before each song, and it was a, a wonderful experience to see him play there. Uh, we came to think of the band as the JFA All-Stars. It also included Michael Max Fleming on the bass. Um, and they played many schools over the years. And in, in the later years, we needed a new horn player, and we brought in someone else we lost recently, uh, the great Joey Morant. Um, as a sideman, which if you knew Joey, he uh, didn't take to the sideman role very well, um, it was still Jackie's gig, and Jackie would calmly start the gig and keep things even keeled. And, and as it went on, Joey would chafe and walk the aisles playing two trumpets and try to call faster tunes. And Jackie always kept it steady, and it made for uh, incredible musical tension and just great shows. Um, and, and afterward, they were both superstars, but um, especially Jackie was, was really wonderful. And for me as a drummer, it was just a treat to see um, this incredible timekeeper, incredible groove um, so many times. And I'm glad Al mentioned Caravan, and then we got to hear it tonight, because that was also his featured tune in the schools. Uh, he would usually do a chorus with the sticks and, and then bust out the tambourine. And, and with tambourine and elbows, I don't even know how he did it. Uh, it was always the, the big climax of the show, um, recalling Sam Woodyard and Papa Joe Jones and just such a treat to see. Um, and it was also amazing to see how um, 
you know, the time never slowed, slowed. he never skipped a beat as, as the years went on at one point after a health setback on a gig with the Harlem Blues and Jazz Band, and I was, he was kind of slowing down in, in general a little bit, and I was like, how is he gonna keep up with this, this really hot band? Um, and uh, they got to an up-tempo number, and he just kind of left out the eighth notes and held it down to the quarters, and he sounded great, and the band sounded great, and it was like, wow, it was uh, really remarkable, and, um, and culminating in, in a pleasant surprise during, during the worst moments of the, the pandemic when there were really no gigs happening, uh, and I heard that Jackie was playing at Smalls, um, one of the few places that was doing the, the live streams, a club I usually associate with people two or three generations younger than Jackie. And, uh, and I was just so, so pleased to think of him out at this time when so many elders were isolated and not performing and, and watching him uh, from home uh, with a mask on and just sounding so great. Uh, at that point, I hadn't you know, seen him in a couple of years and, and he still had it. He didn't uh, miss a beat and, um, and it was so great to hear him. And, and that was a gig with Mark Devine. And uh, Mark was such a good friend to him in the end. And I just want to thank Mark for all his efforts um, tonight as well. Um, thanks, Mark. Um, and yeah, our condolences to the family, uh, to the musical family. Um, Jackie, we love you. Thank you. Thank you, Will. No, you stay there. You stay there. Uh, Mark, get him. Oh, James. No, James. Get, get Dale of Mike. Don't you think you have deserved the right, Dale, to sit there and let us do for you now? What color mic do you want? The, the red one or the blue one? The least I could do was stand up for Jackie. <laughs> yes. And, uh, Jackie Williams was a good friend and always was available for, he's played for more morals than anyone in this congregation and in the jazz foundation and whatever, and because uh, he, he was, he was here and played at more and more services uh, that for uh, so many people, uh, always in demand and always with such class and it was a real pleasure knowing him and calling him my friend uh, and for and to, tonight it's our turn to play for him yes well said and uh, uh, so god bless you jackie and uh, you'll be remembered uh, forever because one who is not forgotten does not die but lives on and on in our hearts in our minds in our total being and, and so he will live forever in our hearts and minds and uh, it was a pleasure knowing him and being considered a friend uh, and uh, he truly was. And uh, God bless him, and uh, he'll always be with us. Thank you. Thank yes. You. The Reverend Dale Lynn. He kept this place going so that this guy could have a job. <laughs> James runs. He was in marketing, he's in now in music, he just does everything. And when I offered, it was like Sunday morning or Saturday morning, the guy responds to my weekday email like, Rob, yes, we'd love to have you. Well, we'd love to have you <laughs> on mic. Right. 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm going to make my comments uh, quick. My name is James Boudreau. I'm the director of programming at St. Peter's Church. I do owe a debt to Dale Lind for uh, keeping the jazz flame alive here at St. Peter's for all of these decades. And one other person, there's another special person here in the audience tonight in the world of St. Peter's who's a little bit more of a behind the scenes person. Now, the musicians probably know her, uh, and maybe some, uh, some of you jazz fans would know her too. But in the back, another person that kept jazz going here literally for decades, Lynn Mueller. Lynn Mueller's in the back over there. Yes. And it's great to have you here, Lynn, and it's great to have uh, all of the musicians, all of the speakers, all of you, Jackie's family. Um, you know, we're honored to, 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 uh, to host this event. It's as simple as that. St. Peter's has been um, the site for jazz memorials since the 1960s. We take this very seriously. We feel that it is our mission to be here. Uh, we're, we've been blessed by this community and we take it seriously to be here for the community into the future. Um, so uh, we have one more, I just wanted to say a couple of very quick things. The jazz, we do have another jazz memorial coming up and I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. It's on December 6th and that's for the guitarist Don Manassi. So we're gonna be celebrating the life of Don Manassi here on December 6th. Uh, and a couple of words of thanks. Mark Devine, he really did a lot of the heavy lifting here. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Along with Al Jackson, so thank you, Al. And um, thank you, Rob, like you said, reaching out, volunteering to do this. We, uh, Rob's done a marvelous job tonight, and I'm really grateful to you. And uh, lastly, thank you to the people of St. Peter's Church who have kept this programming going for 50 years and counting. All right, so we've got a jam session. No? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the MC part to, uh, to Rob over here, the qualified professional. Thank wait, you. Wait, wait, wait. We couldn't get the jam session in, but you did promise your harmonica, didn't you? Yeah, I'll play harmonica. Yeah, you play harmonica. So we had this plan for the jam session. If you looked, your watches were over time. And so we have to conclude it here and now. But there is something called a green room, is there not? There's a reception room. Right over there. Yeah. Yeah. For them. Yes, for them. Yeah. So go nibble on something and drink something and talk about how great it was. And Ronnie Barrage. If you chat with him, he's got some great stories to tell you about Jackie. Okay, guys, but thank you all for coming.